Welcome to the Arduino Spot Welder Project version 2. In this video I'm gonna show you how to build a spot welder, how to program the Arduino code and finally how to use it. Let's begin with the Arduino PCB. First tin all the SMD solder pads so you can install the SMD parts very easy. For this take the SMD parts with a plier and solder just one side to the PCB. Now heat both sides of the part and it will pull itself into its position. When installing the SMD LED make sure the polarization is correct, like shown here. Same thing with the Schottky diode. Now that we installed all the SMD parts go on with the through hole ones. Start with the small ones and work your way up to the bigger ones. Next step is to install the Arduino. If you have an Arduino without the pins installed, solder them to the Arduino first. Make sure they are aligned perpendicular to the Arduino PCB. To do this, first solder only one pin of the pin header row and then align them perpendicular to the Arduino PCB. Once you have done this, you can solder all the remaining pins of the pin header. Next we have to cut the female pin headers to mount the Arduino to the Arduino PCB. If you have a 40 pin header, that's perfect, you can cut two 15 pins and one 8 pin and the 8 pin can be used later to mount the Arduino PCB to the MOSFET board. Stick the two 15 pin female headers to the Arduino and mount it on the Arduino PCB. Now you can solder all the pins to the PCB. Next we can solder the foot switch connector and finally put the MOSFET driver in its socket. Make sure it's aligned correctly. This is how the finished Arduino PCB should look like. Finally cut two 2 pin mail headers and one 8 pin mail header and solder them to the PCB. Make sure they are perpendicular to the PCB so later the Arduino and the MOSFET board will fit together nicely. The finished pin headers should look like this. Now it's time to build the MOSFET board. First bend all the MOSFET's legs to a 90 degree angle. Then screw the U-shaped aluminum piece with M2x8 or M2x10 screws to the PCB. For the links to the templates of the aluminum pieces take a look in the video description. Tighten all the screws with a screwdriver so the aluminum piece has a good contact to the PCB. If you don't want to use an aluminum piece you can also bend a wire to a new shape and solder it to the PCB. Next take the smaller aluminum piece and put it onto the PCB. Mount the MOSFETs on it with M3x10 screws and nuts. When all the MOSFETs are put in, tighten the screws so there is a good electrical contact between the MOSFETs and the aluminum piece. Now we can solder the MOSFET pins to the PCB. Make sure to add plenty of solder so there is a good electrical contact. Finally you need to solder the female pin headers to the Arduino PCB. Therefore stick the female pin headers to the Arduino PCB and then put the MOSFET PCB on top of it. And that's it, Spot Weller PCB is finished. To activate the pulse we need a foot switch. You can either buy a finished one or build yourself a do-it-yourself version with some wood and a simple switch. Before we can use the spot welder we need to download some software to flash the Arduino. For this go to the Arduino homepage and download the Arduino IDE. Next you need to go to my github page where the Arduino project is located. Download the whole project by clicking on the download button and save the zip file. Next unzip the file to your computer and then navigate into the folder where the Arduino code is located. Open the Arduino code so the Arduino IDE will start automatically. Once Arduino IDE is opened, go to Tools and then check 
that you have selected the Arduino Nano, the processor is the Atmega328 and the COM port is not available yet because we don't have plugged in the Arduino. So just connect the Arduino with your USB cable to the PC and after a few seconds it should be installed automatically. Now you can select the COM port which is in my case COM4. Now just click the upload button and the Arduino code will be uploaded to your Arduino. Another thing you can do here is to change the pulse time to whatever you like. The standard maximum is 20 milliseconds, but if you need 99 milliseconds, for example, you can do this. Just don't go higher than 99 because that's the maximum the display can show. Next we need to make the welding cables. For the welding tips, take a piece of 16 square millimeter copper wire and remove the insulation. Cut two pieces, each about 50 millimeter from the long piece of copper wire. To make the tips sharp, you can put them in a drilling machine and then while the drilling machine is spinning, hold it on a belt sander. This way you will get nice round tips. To connect the welding tips and the welding cables, you can either use some terminal strips or if you have a special crimping tool, you can use a crimp connector. The cable shoes that go to the other side of the cable can also be soldered if you don't have a special crimping tool. Now the spot welder is ready to be started for the first time. It is optional to add some diodes to the welder to protect it from high voltage spikes during the welding pulses. First connect the side with the U-shaped aluminum piece of the welder to the battery's negative pole. Then connect the negative welding wire and at the same time the ends of the diodes to the other side of the welder. Make sure to tighten the nuts so it gives a good electrical connection. Mount the positive welding wire and the end of the diodes cable to the positive pole of the battery. Power up the welder with a 3S LiPo battery or a 12V power supply and turn the pulse time down to a low value for the first tests. But before doing the first welds I highly recommend to measure the voltage at the tips to see that there is about 0 volts. If you have 12 volts, don't try to weld. <laughs> or you will get some nice fireworks when touching the nickel strip with the tips. Also, it is recommended to wear safety glasses while welding. For the first test, lay two nickel strips on top of each other and try to weld them together. I found that with some little sparks the welding time seems to be okay. If you get no sparks at all, the welding time is too low and if you get a big firework, your welding time is too high. As you can see, these connections are pretty strong. Now let's try to weld some batteries. On the first try, the pulse time was set a bit too high, so I get very big sparks. After lowering the pulse time to about 5 milliseconds, the welding works very good with my setup. Always apply a good amount of pressure while welding so the nickel strip has a good connection to the battery. Now let's see how strong the connection is with only 4 little welding points. Here is another example of the welding time set to high. As you can see, there are very big sparks. Or if you only weld on one nickel strip or the strip is not touching the battery while welding, you get some nice firework and burn a hole in the nickel strip. For more information like the parts list or the schematics for the board, take a look in the video description.